Leslie, the guy I used to cast Overwatch with. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. It's it's going to come out eventually. Equally as handsome, equally as talented. Oh, man. He's just been insulted in ways he's never but imagined. he's more average height than you are. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So, Vertigo, I actually, I'm going to go against the guys on the desk, the big brain analysts. I'm going to pick D13. I, I genuinely think they've got what it takes to close this one out. Vertigo's a pretty good map for them, albeit a solid as all map for Invictus, not one that I think is going to be easy. I mean, this team has beaten a lot of the Chinese teams. They also beat Beyond, not as cleanly, but they got stomped by Tai Lu. And considering both of them played Tai Lu and Beyond recently, and D13 came out smelling the roses compared to Invictus, this, I think Vertigo goes their way. Mirage, another map that I think D13 can definitely skirmish on, but I don't think we'll go their way. Dust I, 2 was taken out by them, and it's a very similar map. I think, again, we're, we're seeing, like, Invictus just trying to get a feel of, like, how this team can play, right? I mean, I, I think there yeah. is a chance still, there is a world where they could play up against D13. So just like the last match with, with Beachy, it's kind of like, let's, let's kind of see what they got, right? Let's kind of test the waters. Let's not go too, too crazy. I think that's why we... We'll potentially see the 2-1 as well. Uh, see the full three maps. Now Sage though, open up with the first kill of the round. All right, it's gonna respawn. One of the few times we actually see middle being, you know, utilized by teams in flying. Wait, what? Did you just I... push straight through them with the USP straight to the dome? I don't even know. He's just dominating that fight. Damn, so Annihilation's got it all to do with just a clock, the bomb down, and, and no easy way to really get out of this one. Destroyer hasn't got any armor, so I suppose at least a little bit of an upside. Grabs a USP for the one-shot headshots. It's going to have to be quick, and not quick enough. The Destroyer takes him down. It's 1-0. to zero. But just a touch on the final map, then, a Mirage. So I feel like Vertigo goes to D13. Mirage looks better for Invictus overall. D13 have the individual skill. If Rate, Score, Annihilation are showing up, they can definitely take that map. And then when we come on to train, that's where Annihilation's playground. I think he dominates the AWP duels on that, and that already gives him a huge advantage. The knife round could be very important, because if D13 starts CT side train, then I, I think they're in for, uh, their opponents, Invictus, are in for a rough time. Yeah. That's if we even get there. We can always finish 2-0 to zero for either team, really, with the way this veto's gone. Um, but yeah, I'm going to side with D13. I'm going to take the risk. To think towards the match they had versus Tiger on that map, uh, we're yeah. just seeing a full save for D13. That's why we're, you know, kind of not really talking over this. Or what we are talking over is, is that they struggled on the T side. Like, I, I felt like, again, that lack of that experienced in-game leader for their team to really help them adapt into mid-round calls and to adapt the strategies overall is something that highly affects them. So definitely starting off CT side would give them that good little, uh, you know, buffer to go into the T side then thereafter. This will be Invictus taking the clean sweep. It's 2-0. A lot of kills with the SMGs. They did have, I think, four of them, if I'm not mistaken. So they could come back to hunt them. I know we talked about this before, Mitch. You're not a big fan of seeing that many SMGs in the second round. Especially now when they're up against the AKs. But this would be a massive bonus round to win. Just imagine a world where they get themselves a round victory. They keep, let's just say, four players left alive. They pick up AKs off the back of that. I mean, that's you couldn't ask for a better start. No, no, you really couldn't. We'll see how the the whole half is going to start out, though, for the CT side of Invictus. This one really defines it. And that's not what's happening there. Destroyer's running forward, switching weapons, taking his knife out as he goes. Oh, man. So, Rake gets cut off eventually, but, I mean, you've lost the side, essentially. There's an MP9 holding it down. D13 have got a man advantage to play around. Lots of progress up the ramp, but hold on. They're slowing it down too much. Flying's on the flank, and they better be watching for it. At the moment, it looks like Annihilation is. But things could get very dangerous as they look towards that site. Flying might get the perfectly timed flank as Oi takes down score. Now they're going to all look towards pushing the site. Mr. Cap's got a nade out, but Flying was being watched still. Annihilation watching that for 30 seconds on the flank. You got to respect the resilience. Now they should know, actually, that both players are on the A side or that they were. Oh, what? what is going on? Twice on the same angle, one of the players oh, ran away. The knife out. They fainted it. They ran away, and Annihilation just stayed there. Maybe he overheard the amount of players coming off the site because they got the kill into the flank. Annihilation picks up the last. That's a triple kill for him, and they get themselves an M4 on top of this for Mr. Cap. That was the thing is, Flying was in such a, an amazing position to shut that down, right? If he had an, oh, yeah. an MP9 in the back, okay, not a big deal. Maybe he gets one kill, but just to be turned on when he had the only real rifle for his team. That's unfortunate. And then again, you know, we saw Oi take down, I believe it was Score. 
and there was no refrag, and that was an AK like donated to their side, so there's still maybe some some gaps in uh, the way D E13 are playing this map, but obviously early times, I'm judging it a little bit early here. We're gonna hop down to the next round, and again, the rush gonna be coming through. Tamir, will you expect to push in past him? Well, they're gonna find out, but still, they clean up the kills. I'm finding every single one of them. That M4 for Zhao Sage now, the remaining beacon of light for the CT side. That was a very quick shutdown as D13 get control of the A site, smoke it off as they cross over. Nice clean plant spams through the smoke. Oh my god, Zhao Sage, run for your life, man. Dinked up through the wall to 6 HP. He's glad he bought a helmet. And so for. Uh for D13 again they bounce back you know that start isn't quite as good as it looked like it could have been for Invictus and I do take your point Jason that you made in the previous round that over towards short when Oi was able to find that kill for free onto score that was definitely a mistake there was a smoke down and I believe as it, as it faded score was sticking around look you can try to find the fights a lot of the time there especially if you've got the AK you have an advantage but up against an SMG the risk reward just doesn't pay off especially because of how unpredictable they are they kind of throw the rules of combat out the window because they can peek through swinging at 100 miles an hour meanwhile yeah. you're just having to stay stationary and it's very difficult to predict their path it's just not the kind of risk that you want to take um considering the reward is that you kill an mp9 which isn't that great and the risk is they get money for an smg kill and pull back the weapon. man advantage and your weapon yeah so it's like everything goes against you I mean, it's also even more rough because you're fighting like them on home field, right? Like you're fighting in one of the best situations for for an SMG to be fighting in. But exactly. Either way, it's still going to be two two, right? And we're going to be seeing Invictus. Kasage is going to have the only rifle for him. A couple of deagles on the back of this. Again, you you can't really feel too confident necessarily for D13 to have this round in the bag. This were definitely one of the teams we saw have some phenomenal turnaround rounds. And will Tamir gonna spot out the boost, get that kill annoyed. Knows the second player there. Nades in, but doesn't catch out onto that player. I do like, though, you see how D13 is be very careful about potential flanks now. They had two players sitting over towards B, just looking for anyone to get aggressive. Trying to really keep this one clean and really not allow themselves to be flanked in from behind. And Annihilation, this is a this is a worrying sign, I think, for Invictus. He's on eight and two right now, four rounds in. Man hasn't even pulled out the AWP yet, Jason. And that's when Annihilation really becomes dangerous. With that round win under their belt, we go up 3-2. And I think Annihilation's kills are a little bit inflated just because they were against a weaker buy. Obviously, in the pistol round, he was left alone, so he's able to take the Glock fights. We're not really... Just because he's doing well now doesn't necessarily he mean that... Yeah, of course, of course. But he was in that what, 1v4, so he had the chances to take a couple frags get pushed on i, I honestly it's just these mm -hmm. sorry i honestly hope they don't see the op come out of them on t side i, I mean ct side i can <laughs> completely understand right you go for early peak towards ramp. Yep. maybe t side if they are getting aggressive against you then you want to pick it up speaking of aggressive look at this four players here to defend the site even flying alone at b tamir just no fear tamir with no fear there we go i like that, like the of that. <laughs> just pushes straight through ramp again and they're really trying to keep invictus on their toes and and they prevent the op from doing anything. Viva, who actually picks it up, doesn't get a chance to pull off a shot. He's out of 47 HP off the bat. And I, I like this. I like this really quick play out of you. Yeah, I do like the AWP if you're going to ramp, um, but only if you're really dedicating yourselves, like at least four players towards that angle very early on. But yeah, it's definitely much, much harder to use. Um, much more two-dimensional. Nice nades. That's fantastic. Viva lit down initially by Annihilation, and the nades finish him off. Jeff Sagi and Destroyer, though. They're pulling it all the way back. One kill after another go in their way. The spam and the smoke by Annihilation. Now 1v3. A little bit more doable. He doesn't know about the player coming on the flank. Good shots to Destroyer. And the bomb going to be picked up. But he has no idea where this final player is. Not a clue. And Flying had already negotiated his way towards Sandbags. Does Annihilation expect this? If Flying stays tucked in, no, he's facing... Oh, I thought he could have catch or caught him planting the bomb, but Annihilation with the 1v3, and let's throw the point from the previous round out the window that just because he performed well in the early rounds didn't mean he would in the <laughs> buys. My god, he's showing up. 11 kills, and he gets an op for free. Ridiculous. And Invictus now. Just the pistols. 
this quick play again victus they have to invest so much utility to stop them getting so fast paced like tamir again he ran straight through got very far up the ramp denied viva from having a chance to use the op now annihilation this is what kind of worries me right is that the quick play it's worked out really well for d13 i'm worried that now they have an op are they intentionally going to slow things down to play around this and will that give invictus that chance to stabilize again i understand we're just on the deagles but it, that does worry me at some aspect. I'm not sure if that really makes sense to you. Maybe it's just weird in my head. But I, I, I just, the, the pace they've been playing at, it's just been a hit, a hit, a hit. It's been working for them. I'm inclined to agree with you there, Jason. I mean, look, when you're against Eagles, you have to change your game strategy. The reality is, if you just go for an a hit you become predictable they're probably going to stack it up especially when you're on an eco it's a risk in a buy round to put one or two extra players towards that site because you just leave such a big gap but when you've got pistols it's a kind of risk you can take because the reward can pay off massively if they do still come towards that site and look how quick they are on rotations nothing spotted outside a so immediately there's four players on the a site including the the mid rotate immediately and almost five. They've got to be quick in finding these duels as Flying picks up one. It's not spiraled out of control just yet. Mr. Cap's getting very close to a smoke against pistols. I do not like it. Oh Spam's God. coming through. He's spraying. They know exactly where he is now. He's making steps. I mean, if they don't isolate him and take the kill, I'd be very, very surprised. Tamar almost gets dropped down as well. Okay, it is going to go cleanly enough their way. Oh, but damn, I, a lot of risks taken by D13 in that round. Annihilation of the kill coming through. Mr. Cap with two. Annihilation on 12. He almost has more kills than his... I mean, I don't know if you can hear me. That, that, that low in action was me trying to count in my head. He almost has more kills than his entire team. He's up to 12 and they have 14 combined uh, around him. Ridiculous stuff. And, and if he continues this pace, this could be a very quick vertigo coming down to it. Moving straight over to Mirage. Actually, yeah, Mirage right off the bat. I don't know why I wrote down IG as the second map. A little bit of a screw, I guess, maybe. See how that goes later on. And again, the pace. I think we're seeing Invictus respect it. Sitting a lot farther back on the A site. They realize, well, we don't really have the ability to contest them on ramp anymore. Let's just play more for the after plant situation. Utility's going to be lacking a bit, so... Play around this. And Annihilation. He doesn't seem to give a... What?! What a shot and destroy and the third onto Oi. What is this man on? What did he eat this morning? Because he is playing insane. Three kills for him. 15 now in total. I got to see those replays. I got to see that second shot. That was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Come on. We got to see that again. Here he comes up the ramp up in he, hand. And he just drive really... peeks into that and gets the kill. <laughs> Oh, man, it's just nasty. And he's just so good with the op. This is what we were saying. So, Jason, you said you don't want him to take the op on the T side, eh? <laughs> well, I, you know, you normally you see an op picked up. You see them play slow. That's not yep. the case for Annihilation. And I, if he picks up the op, it means go, I guess. It's the opposite exactly. of slow. I, I, how, do, how does he walk into a site like that? No flashbang. No smokes coming down. Yep. Have that amount of confidence. 196 ADR. What is going on? There's a whole lot of players, Jason, that if they do that exact same thing, we're going to be sat here going, what are you doing? Why exactly, are you doing right? that, you idiot? And then the thing is, when it's Annihilation, you're like, oh, he's going to hit this, though. Don't worry. And I think it's very similar. See, in a way, it's that whole thing of if you do it and it works out, you're a genius. If it doesn't, you're an idiot. Um, but also, you look at a player like Simple's always been the one for me. He goes for these crazy players. Remember the knife he attempted and they ended up losing because of it? I'm like, okay, he, his crazy, aggressive, and somewhat brainless at times play style. Not brainless, but, you know, if it doesn't work, it looks that way. Um, but just hyper-aggressive play style can look stupid. It can backfire. But yeah. I guarantee you with him, it, it gets them more rounds than it loses. Exactly. And that's what makes it worthwhile. But when we see a team play a whole map, and they do the same thing 16 times, and they lose 16-0, you're like, okay, guys, come on. Like, you're not, you're not simple. Yeah, I, I mean, if you just if you just look at the amount of times crazy plays work out versus the amount of times it makes them lose rounds, you're, you're going to take that any day of the week. And Annihilation, I mean, he's able to do that. He even gets the tag on a Viva down to 6 HP over towards the A ramp. You get the first two kills around again. The Deagles, it should be a kill for Destroyer. There we go. Nice little first on a rate and a second on the score. The two one-taps coming through. One-tap dirt naps. 
even always comes through. This is what we said. Deagles, you have to respect it for Invictus. It doesn't mean you're going to have a one round. But Annihilation's still alive, and I think he's hungry for more. No, oh, he's always hungry. Don't you worry. With the AWP in his hands, if they were to get that bomb down, it would look fantastic just holding down that site. But the problem is they've got to push forward, and this is where the op isn't so useful. Good position being held in towards CT by Viva. Or not by Viva, excuse me, by Oi, it must be. No, it's Destroyer. Okay, we got there. Third time lucky. There we go. He's got a great angle. Annihilation. Try to take him at the Tech 9, and he does. Mr. Cap onto Oi, and what is going on? Viva's low. That's an easy kill. I, I actually thought the Destroyer had the angle to win the round, essentially, as they came through, but evidently not. 7 to 2, we go. That was a promising start for Invictus, but unfortunately falls apart. And Jason, you know what that reminds me of? The, that whole conversation about <laughs> aggressive. 17, Three, four, five, he has 17, seven. they have 19. Wow. The rest of his team combined. That's pretty insane. You, you yeah. know, if, mm -hmm. okay, just go ahead with your thought, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, you know the whole, like, playing aggressive, as long as it works out more than it doesn't, it reminds me of the, um, for anyone that watches American football, and you probably know this, Jason, uh, about the college football coach who makes them run the ball every single time. Uh, when they get a touchdown, they always run it because statistically, if you score like 57 percent, it was something like 57 or 53 percent of the time they succeed in scoring the two points by running, which is like a risk rather than the like 98 percent of kicks that they land, which makes it obviously worthwhile to run it. But for the spectators, they hated him when he started doing it because the 47 percent of the time or the 45 percent that he that they didn't get the two points, they were like, why didn't you take the free point? It's like, not well, necessarily a free point either, though. Well, for people, yeah, but... for people out there who don't know American football, by the way, when you score a touchdown, you get six points, and you have the option to kick the ball for one point or go for another score, basically, for two. You get two, yeah. That, that's what we're, we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, was, it was always interesting to me how people will say on the surface level that he was an idiot for never kicking it, because they're like, it's a free... Because, you know, you He's hit the vast majority it. of them. But exactly, money balling it, 100%. That's what it's all about. Play the statistics, because numbers never lie. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you need that one point, if it's like 10 seconds left and you're tied, he's going to kick it. But like the vast majority of the time, it would just be run, run, run every time. I like it. And I like the way Annihilation is playing. 18 kills. Now, one more to go. To be dead even with what the rest of his team has. This man, I mean, he's shown up to play. Again, they're already qualified through. Both these teams are, but he's just playing for blood. He's playing unhinged. Versus team in the meantime trying to take control of middle. Nice little body block onto the smoke. Maybe give an angle. Jalsog is going to have to back away. Mir being overrun. It's Mir's going to charge again. Mir with no fear. Trying to be the entry fragger for his team. Doesn't seem to matter if he falls. And why would you care when you have Annihilation able to back you up? They get a clean round. Well, well hold on. Maybe a clean round. They had four players left alive. Destroyer does take down one. And the one on three with no money. What, you, what, you, you save? Maybe if you get another kill, you go for it. If they push you, which might seem to be happening. Oh, he sees a shadow. He's being flanked. See, I mean, he's, he's sticking around a long time. It's unlikely they exit towards him at this point. So he should just be trying to secure that weapon for the next round. I guess maybe he thought they would try hunt him down, but that's exactly what they're doing from different angles. And he hits the headshot, I think. But unfortunately, with the M4, it's not enough. Mr. Cap survives that, and 8 to 2 we go. D13 dominating on the T side. And as I said, you know, these guys have played similar, or the exact same opponents, Beyond and Tai Lu. And D13 did much better against both of those. So it's not too much of a surprise that they're performing well, but it's more so the matter. Like. <laughs> We didn't come in here going, yeah, I reckon Annihilation is going to get 20 kills in the first 10 rounds. That's probably... You so they're going to easily win it. Like, well, well, I guess we should have, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't my thought. It's ridiculous stuff so far. Again, how many gun runs have we really seen out of Invictus so far? Like two, three, maybe? 10 rounds, some rough times, and this is coming through again. Scores, gonna be low HP down to two. Annihilation's down to 19. Away comes in with two Deegs, and there's Shao Sage as well. Can't sleep on these Deagles, and at least score on two, and Mr. Cap on the 100 HP, but it's gonna be a two on three. Now down to the two on two. Score, gonna connect the shot, playing the range battle against Destroyer. Leaving it all on flying with the 
thick skin, just going to point that out, but there's still a big chance here you can win this round. Score with a triple already. I think Fine's just hoping they continue to hit towards the safe site. I literally just picked up a, a 5-7 Hyper Beast the other day. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, honestly. Oh, here we go. Flying's got the chance. There's a free kill score. It was so low. And he's actually got Mr. Cap lit a little bit. Managed to recover the off. And that's... Oh, no, he misses. Didn't get the shot off, I think. Well, Mr. Cap pulling off the clutch. Oh, man. I actually... I know I'm, I'm coming in. I'm saying D13 will win. I'm rooting for them. But I thought I wanted Invictus to win that. Because this CT side is just desolate. They're finding nothing. And at least the pistol round would have brought us back to the normality of Asian Counter-Strike. Of what we've seen in this tournament so far. And I mean, it's a real testament to how, okay, on the offense, sometimes the teams are making mistakes. They're not playing. And we saw it even in those first couple of rounds, right? They're not playing to to always be able to trade each other out. But at the same time, it is a testament to the scene and how good these individuals are. The Deagle rounds succeed to the rate that they do because it's not like we're seeing sloppy battles where someone's spraying at a guy, missing 15 bullets. The other guy is deagling back with his full mag just to get a kill. It's usually just you give them a tiny opportunity and they headshot you right away. And you saw it there with Oi over towards short. A tiny gap in that smoke that he's able to move around. And you you think you're covered. And he's got two headshots before you know it. And I, I don't know why it's so consistent for Invictus to be able to pull rounds like this off, too. I'm trying to think, is there any other teams around the world, not even just in this region alone, that are, are so damn good when it comes to this? Do you think any of any off the top of your head? Oh, I mean, when you look at the CIS region, you can pretty much just throw a dart at a dartboard of team names and you'll you'll pick out one i mean absolutely everybody there even down to the lower tiers like namiga and stuff can just destroy when it comes to deagles uh but within regional matchups specifically i think that's probably gonna have a much higher rate like i think if you put invictus let's say you put invictus up against namiga um i don't think you'd see the same rate of force buys succeeding uh, just generally, I, I guess also stylistically how they play is going to be very different. Uh, I think CIS are more pointed. Uh, they definitely play rounds. I mean, let's take an example. Look at Tiger. You remember we did a couple games of Tiger, like two or three in a row. Um, as in day on day, obviously. We're not making teams play more than one best of three a day. And what? They were pushing in with the last 20 or 30 seconds in the round. I remember an Inferno where that was the case every single round i mean their t side was longer than some maps we've done and you go to cis you won't see that if you see a minute left on the clock you're you're in for a treat someone's probably saving that's about the only reason you see that is it's uh it's very very quick something that that changes things when you go outside of your local region but at the moment everybody just knows how the other team plays and they've got the aim to back up their, their deagling prowess I'd almost love to see an entire match with just Eagles only. See what's gonna happen. I'm sure we can arrange that at some point, like a show match. I mean, get you against Dinko, but I don't think Dinko wants to be wrecked twice <laughs> in a row. I don't think so, no, it's 0.7 rating. Doesn't need to go any lower. I mean, it could. We can make that happen. Oh, he's lucky it hasn't, to be honest. A little boost up, flashbang as well. I like the play doesn't pull off the shot and i don't think flying was really that blind unfortunately playing a little bit of an off angle but again flying nine kills he's definitely one of the biggest playmakers on the team of invictus and we haven't seen him really shine because annihilation has just been really true to his name annihilating his opponents rake gets boosted up and well he's gonna meet the same fate as tamir flying still holding aggressive look at this a third kill they're not expecting him to be up here all up in their grill eventually he'll fall the leaves e13 with only two players nine two in the score and I, I don't see them winning this round. This should be so difficult to be able to pull off Annihilation. He'll get the kill with the Tech 9, leaving him in a one on three. He's got to pull off the 4K to win the round. He's obviously not sure if anyone's flanking him behind him. As we can see, no one's going for that. He does have the freedom to play around with this. But with 35 seconds left, I think he's a little bit scared to maybe give over the op or be looking to push in in the last few seconds. He's got Destroyer up close. He's got Eva far away. Molotov, caught, yeah, caught directly on Aviva, but he's just going to sit in it. 
Actually, that Molotov only landed on top of the box. It didn't even spread anywhere else. And that will be Invictus bouncing back. Get themselves around. But it's not going to be easy still. As D13 still have a ton of money left to spend. Annihilation going straight back to the op. This is, this is the place we, we expect out of flying, right? This is the, the player. This is exactly what we should be seeing out of him. And that's why we highlighted him when we talked about uh, the start of the match. Him versus score. Let's take a little bit of time to get there. And hopefully for his sake and his team's sake, he can continue to do just that. Yeah, they're not out of oh, this no, just yet. That. That's, that's a be wicked shot that. if ever I've seen one. Oh my god. There we go. Eventually taken down right. Four players on the A side immediately. They're rotating very quickly. Flying's already pushed down lower B, though. That's why they know they've got that control. Middle is a little bit open for them. I think always going to have to go back. Well, not if they keep finding kills like that. He won't. Annihilation trying to wall bang on. Oh, just dry peeks it again. He just can't be stopped, Jason. I mean, he's he's technically approaching this incorrectly, but it doesn't matter. No one can punish him. So why would he treat them with respect? Why would he play proper Counter-Strike when he can just do this? God, just just stop. He's going to be in a 1v2 now, and unfortunately not the 4k for him this time. He's shut down from up above by Destroyer. You're seeing what Annihilation can do. Like, that's what he can do playing a game by himself. Imagine they actually set up the support structure around him to allow him to succeed in those duels. Even more so. You That's know, a scary idea. What worries me though, it confuses me, is that we, we see these like pauses come in, these tech pauses, like some, something's going on. Or it's just a tactical pause, even. I think more so the tech pauses. And then all of a sudden, the team who is getting demolished, all of a sudden just like comes online. They all of a sudden start to be able to play well. I mean, you see now back to back rounds for Invictus and D13 have been slowed down. I think we need to see maybe teams more, you know, more willing to take tap pauses, just to talk some things over. Yeah. And if anything, just like in American football, just to freeze out the enemy team. 100%. Yeah, slow the momentum. That's a, it's a good strategy. Flying's in position just in time to... Oh, no, never mind. If he was there half a second earlier, he would have been nice and comfy, but he was still settling in. And a 5v3 emerges. And Victor's behind by quite a bit. And this is something, when we mentioned about Annihilation zopping, that's something that's going to limit them when they try to go up a level. When they try to go international, if they were to make it to the major, they wouldn't succeed. Not with the way they're playing. It works in, in this level, but when you start coming up against your Simples, your Zywoos, they're, they're not going to give you the room to dry peek them in and off. What's happening here? Invictus are back in it all of a sudden. They're finding kill after kill. Oyam in the second of the round, taking down Annihilation, and Score's got a 1v2 it. That fell apart so quickly. Did they just push in again with no utility? I mean, they did that earlier in these rounds to be successful. It was Tamir just to kind of lead the way, right? You can't be doing that anymore. They just are going to wise up to it. And well, now score is going to be spotted out, but at least clears out a couple of angles for himself. We well, might peek into this. He's going to be behind the girder. And he gets the first, and oh, the spray almost comes in onto the second. Always oh, going to close that with a triple kill, and he'll get the fifth round on the board. But that should have been a 10 for D13. Having such a big advantage in that round and rushing things maybe when they don't need to. I mean, it's worked for them for the most part. Once a team wises up to this, that you can't depend on that strategy anymore. You need to have that, that deeper traffic, right? And that's what we talked about, especially on maps like Inferno. You can't depend on your strat A, B, and C. You got to have, you know, a D, E, F, G, G1, G2. Like, you, you got to have more depth to you. I hope I that's know. not what you're, what you're calling like the American football call it. Go for G56. What? What is that? Is that? Well, I mean, what, where the hell did Blue Forty Two originate from? Hey, true. I have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe because it rhymes. I don't know. <laughs> it's the best guess. Or maybe it stuck around because it rhymes. Either way, D thirteen looking for double digits. I mean, it's going to be rough to get on the board. I mean, Invictus have definitely been playing better, even when they lose those opening duels. They've pulled themselves by their bootstraps back into the game or into the round. Oi, trying to do the same here. Annihilation is so low on four health. And he's taken down by Destroyer on a far. Good shot by Tamer. And oi, oh, back through the smoke. That's a bit of a mistake. The bomb can now be planted. The cover is there. Stop these CTs pushing. Well, <laughs> that's what I mean. Mr. Cap just sprays them down with headshots. And 10 to 5 we go. Great T-side by D13. Kills. You know, and, I, and I'm not calling anyone out in particular. We did talk about how Scorn Annihilation being very consistent. Rate kind of the third piece to that puzzle. Has been inconsistent, unfortunately. He's only on five. 
But again, you're up 10-5, Annihilation has 22 kills, that's not really that big of a deal, right? Even Tamir's uh -huh. stepping up quite a bit, like, I think his, his selflessness to be able to rush in towards sites, to get information, maybe get those entry frags, really helping D13, you know, do wonders. And now going into the pistol round of the second half, I mean, if D13 pick this up, I'm going to be a little bit of afraid here, a little bit worrying for Invictus. Well, you want to know the good news or the bad news? Uh, bad news. Okay, good, because there is no good news. Invictus are a pretty CT-sided team on this map. I mean, just looking at the game versus Beyond, that was where they managed to come back into it. They got five rounds T-side, and then 11 to 2 their CT-side. Now, Damn. you know, I, I don't know how good people out there are with uh, numbers and with maths, but 11 is a lot more than 5. So, <laughs> they're not in a good spot. They're really not. For Invictus, this has to be a better T-side than we've seen them have versus a decent level of teams. And we know that D13 are solid on the CT side from their game versus Beyond. And they're six rounds against Tai Lu, which... It is Tai Lu at the end of the day. Ooh, I like this boost. Annihilation. He's gonna see over the smoke. He's not gonna hit a shot. Okay, well, he does get the spray to Hunter Shao Sage. He gets the first kill. Even some more damage being done here or there. Bomb will be planted. The retake gonna come through. Tamir's gonna have a smoke and a kit. So maybe throwing that towards ramp or maybe towards the side. Can help them get back in. Viva just tucked away inside of uh, sandbags. Smoke will be coming through. It looks like out of Tamir in just a few seconds. Time still to work with. Actually going directly on top of the bombs. They're gonna try to sneak it away. Tamir's just gonna stick it. Three seconds left. He has his teammates pushing to cover him off. And he's gonna pull off the defuse. Oh no, it's all gone bad for Invictus. And they're actually losing players even after time here. Honestly, not a big deal since they lost around anyways, but that's... That hurts. That was... That was ballsy. Uh, yeah, that, that... That was Tamir fit a kit on his utility belt with balls that big. <laughs> that's a very good question, Jason. I don't know if... Well, two things. I don't know if we're ever going to find the answer out to that one. And I don't know if I want to, to be honest. That is a very... Just... It's, it's a very just wow round. That's all I can say about it. I'm speechless. My head's in my hands and... D13, 11 to 5. We mentioned you know the importance. Would... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You know what I kind of love to see? Mm-hmm. I'm... A, I, you know how, uh, I don't think it, I don't know if it's a thing in, like, um... In, like, uh, like, this part of the world, like, in Europe. But in the US, you have, like, uh, calendars. Like, firemen calendars, where it's just, like, these oh, attractive yeah. looking firemen, you know, oh, okay. shirtless. When are we gonna get, like, the esports version of that? You know? You know what, Jason? I'll, I'll Let's start. get like Pasha, Blame F, uh, who else is super buff together, and like you know, do their months. I was just waiting for my name to be read out, but that's that's fine. There's a fine. there's a you need a certain height. I think. <laughs> Screw you. I'll do the lying down one. Um. <laughs> okay. So. You're definitely not short on that. <laughs> not short in any way, Jason. Perfectly average height. We discussed this. So Invictus actually made a really good choice in that previous round. Their, I think it sort of uh, exemplifies their lack of confidence. Really underlines it for me on this map on the T side. But they didn't force by up after finding a bomb plant. They took just deagles, got absolutely rinsed, and then they came into this one with their AK 47s, their armor, their utility. That's not something we ever really see. It's a fairly unusual choice. Now, I, I can stand behind it, but it definitely doesn't show them I as a very like, confident side i feel like the idea is they need to streak a lot of rounds together yeah so let's go into a round with everything we need with the ak's the utility if we lose players and we force up it could be a little bit rough because then we can lose a force if d13 go for it i think that's yeah. at least in my head how i imagine yeah the reasoning behind that is it definitely does make sense uh, the only downside to it is that they they really were relying the, the gamble instead of being that they needed to win the previous round was that they needed to do damage now the ct side is a lot of money built up on those players so even losing this one where they True. do come in with weaker weapons they can rebuy and d13 have made this one super close and it's oh, i don't want to see this peak I, you've been spotted don't what are you doing god damn it score God damn it. And this is what we're talking about, Jason. When you make plays like that, yay, they won the round. Hooray, it's great. But if you do that versus a higher level team, when you come into Europe and start playing, North America possibly even, maybe being a bit too generous there, you're, oh, um, oh, oh. <laughs> you're not going to get away with that. I, that's what's going to lose you. It, yeah, it's a two on one. You, you have utility. I'm not really that stressed about that because he was the only one with it. But 
I want to see him wait until his teammate gets there. Sure, allow the bomb plant. Why not your head by quite a bit? Maybe harass him, mo molly him off. You've got a nade, and then pop that flash over, push him together. That's what I want to see. Not this. You've been spotted. I'm gonna repeek him. Screw it. If he dies again, you can see the situation, right? He dies. Then it's in a one v one. Invictus winning, and we're sat here. Everyone in chat would be sat here going, what the hell are they doing? Why did they face it one at a time? But when it works out, it's, you know, you don't get critiqued on it too, all, all too frequently. Yeah. And that's kind of a, like the annoying part. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, the annoying part of this is like, yeah, because it is working. Can't really criticize them too much, but at the same rate, like they should be criticized by someone telling them that's not the smart play to make. Like that doesn't, that's not the play to make to win games, to win rounds. That's a play to like show off. And maybe that's just a sign of the region as well, where it's very individually focused, right? We talked about how teams don't really like to flash each other out in towards, uh, you know, pushes, support players aren't really rewarded as much. Yeah. You know, if you want to be seen as a good player, you got to pick up kills. And that's not necessarily true when it comes to the rest of the world and how the other regions play Counter-Strike. That wasn't a bad peek by Raid. He was flashed around the corner. Just a good connection by Xiao Sage. He saw the flash, he turned away from it in time. Lit down to 22. The camera's actually blocking the map. Okay, so Flying was coming behind. Got the angle on Tamer. Brings it into a two-on-two. Two. Even with Xiao Sage low, this is a round that they can definitely win. Flying's trying to harass that off. Push him down, chase him. I don't have the D bomb. What are they doing, though? He's peeking. Oh, luckily, Score was there to swing afterwards, but that could have easily spiraled out of control. They left the bomb and spawn, Oh, it's only 10 seconds left now. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they pushed in like there were like 17 seconds. I had no bomb. They weren't going to win that. I guess they were just trying to go for the kills to close the round out. Well, then Shao Sage went for the bomb. So <laughs> they were going for the kills, but also not going for the kills. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know reasoning behind that. Maybe just uh, an oversight, unfortunately. Oh, man. Annihilation, 26. Score up to 15. Mr. Cap up to 60. I feel like Mr. Cap deserves <clears throat> definitely some praise in the last few days. We always talk about the big three for their team, but I mean, he's definitely had a lot of impactful, uh, impactful maps, a lot of big kills, even Tamir as well. So he's a bit aggressive. The flash comes in into Oi, spots him out. Of course, that generator will be a little bit too thick for score to take him away. And the money's not really going to be there for Invictus anymore. If they lose this round, that's, that's pretty much the map done. That means we'll be going over to Mirage as a second pick. I, I will say this though, Mitch. I don't mm -hmm. think Mirage will be nearly as one-sided as this. No. It's definitely a little bit of an anomaly and, and one of the weaker maps for Invictus. I'm with you there. I'm with you 100%. percent you know, regardless of how you want to look at Mirage, I think if you think either of these teams are going to, you know, 16-6, 16-7, I, I wouldn't side with you. I would look more towards an even double digits for both. And I'd possibly even favor Invictus, even with this weaker performance. It is a map that they're not immensely comfortable on. Yes, they've played it a bit, but you just look at those games they played. Picking up rounds because of individual skill, not because of um, an actual firm grasp on, on how this map should be approached. The oh, short score. left open. I mean, that highlights it more than ever. Destroyer was taken down, but they still tried to plant, even though they knew score was short. What's that with the swapping weapons again? Invictus, they are lost. They are completely lost here on Vertigo. And this is much worse than I thought it would be. And I think that's in part, you know, just a small part, due to the insane performance that's Ooh. been coming through from uh, Annihilation. We got insane performances. Look at that insane transition. <laughs> it is Boy, The Guardian Eagle. I feel like that's the rank I would get. Uh, you know, below bronze. Yeah. Right down there with a uh, wood one. Next update, Jason rank wood one. Always going for the challenge with the glue, and he actually wins the battle against Score. I'm, I'm honestly really surprised to see that. He gets himself a quick double kill as Tamir falls as well. Flying to charge straight in towards the B site. Mr. Cap trying to play on the edge of the smoke. There's going to be four players here, and Mr. Cap will be finished off. And it seems like uh, the cockiness out of D13 is being punished in this round. Bomb has been but with the lead that they have, there's a, a real position. And whilst, look, I'm a big fan of being harsh on players. You, you've seen it with scores peak onto the A site. 
even though he won the round. And, but you do have to look at the position they're in right now where they can afford to let... In a way, I can see where the mentality comes from that they can afford to play looser and still win the game. See, but I, I agree, but at the same time, I feel like this is a perfect opportunity for them to practice closing out a game. Thinking sure. back to the train match they had against Tiger, I think they were up 15 to 9 at one point. Yeah, I even have it written down in my notes. 15 to 9. And uh -huh. that wins a double overtime. Wait, am I getting confused by the map here, or is Destroyer just out to the right? No, he's down below, is he? Oh, he must be. I just saw him on the map and heard him running. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> is he is he right in front of the opera? Fine. But yeah, that's I mean that's what I'm looking at. God. Is that they they've shown they can win games, but they've also thrown like 15-9 leads. I wanna see them close it out, you know. I, I don't wanna see them get extra aggressive or or, or not play with their heads. You, you don't need to close out games like this. You can let things slip away. They eventually did pick up the victory against Tiger, but to lose that many rounds, you know, six in a row, put in overtime, that, that's not oh, acceptable. Geez. Oh, scores just wrecked them. He just spammed them through the wall to take down Oi. Annihilation with his 27th kill. He has 21 headshots as well. Just, you know, pretty good for an opper, especially because they were T-side opping this whole time. And this looks like it could be the end of the road for Invictus here on this map. And gave it the word of caution that this wasn't as clear cut as you would have thought. That Invictus are not the the solid team on Invertigo that maybe some people might think they would have been destroyer. Good patience going around that smoke. Shosage's pulled back another kill. This could go their way. Destroyer with another to rate. And all of a sudden, a 1v2. And you see the problems there with the kill feed and kill through smoke, even though he was on top of it. Score's got the USP out. Low HP on destroy. Oh, he hit him once, but down to two health. And a 4k for Destroyer, closing the round out. And 15 to 7 we go. You know, Jason, it's also another point about this, uh, about closing out games. The fact is, you really don't want to allow your opponents to gain a little bit of steam coming onto the next map as well. Especially because it's not yeah. one that you're immensely confident on. So giving them this kind of room where, look, Destroyer, that round alone, he's now, anything he was feeling before this... Like he had a bad game, he would have finished 12 to 16, it wasn't great. Or 12 to 17, even if he died that round. Now, he's even. He's after pulling off a 4k. Now they can say, you know what, actually? We were just a little bit slow to warm up, but we got this. And the morale is going to be much higher, which is not what you want. Yeah, you're ending things off on a high note, even even mm -hmm. though you've got a loss. Oh, Annihilation is going to be able to pull off the first kill with the Deagle. I mean, I think it's... Oh, okay. Or is it going to kill and destroy? I think it's about sending a message, you know, D13. If they just close this out, like, what, what was it? 15 or 16? Five? Five, yeah. Then that's like, all right, yeah, we just dominated you on that map, right? That really yeah. sends a message towards the enemy team. But then I'll let them get some rounds back. There's going to be some frustrations on your side. Annihilation says, shut up, Jason. I want 30 kills. I want to close this out <laughs> 16 to 7. And they might be able to do it now. It's always the last one remaining. This was just a pistol force about a D13, showing that they can be just as deadly with the Deagles as Invictus. Annihilation has been spotted here by Oi. So this is going to be a wide, fast swing, and that's going to be very tilting for Annihilation if he falls. Oi knows exactly where he is as he comes around. And he doesn't go fast, but he takes him down anyway. It's okay. There's the bomb plan secured, a 1v2. Perfectly winnable. And Oi has been having... Okay, he might not be doing too well in the kills department at the moment, but he's had some really good rounds towards the start. Invictus... Need this to get it 15 to 8. One step closer to an overtime. As Oi makes his way in towards the CT spawn, he catches Mr. Cap off. But score, the player with a molly and an AK, most importantly, is the final one alive. 15 seconds, has to make a move, has to stick that bomb in just four seconds left. And he's not going to get it. The round's already won by Oi. No oh. kid in play for the CT side. He just wants to remove the weapon, but Oi gets it through the wall. A 3k. And another clutch for Invictus. And Jason, let's just take a trip into the minds of Invictus at the moment. Let's go back. 16-5. You lose that map. Now, whoever's... The pep talk. It's not always necessarily the captain of the IGL. Whoever the one is that comes through and says, You know what, guys? We got this. You've got to sell something. You've got to sell an idea based on nothing. You got stomped on that map and to say, You know what? It's not our map. We, we can warm up. We can get better. We can hit our shots later. But no one's seen the evidence of that. You've just been wrecked. But then, all of a sudden, you pick up those last four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds. You know, you still lose the map more than likely, but you build up some momentum. Then you can say, well, look, the proof's in the pudding, boys. If we had been on that forum from the start, which we're on right now, we would have won. 
See, and now everyone can get devil's, behind that. I'll play devil's advocate on that. Sure. I think losing 16-5 isn't as morally destroying as pulling it back and getting to like 16-14 or 16 -14. Oh, yeah. I feel like that hurts way more because then you're like, Definitely. oh, if you just didn't lose one of those one rounds earlier on, we could have had it. This mistake would have changed the game for us. Mm -hmm. Um... At the same time, like you're saying, I, I kind of agree. Even if they don't get to like 16, 14, if it's still like 16, 12, or 16, 11, they're able to finally warm up flying. I, you know, it happens, I guess. Ray gets the one to come to Destroyer, and Score will get one as well, so keeping it costly. But yeah, I mean, getting close and losing, it hurts, but getting the momentum built up, saying, all right, guys, let's let's, let's shake off the rust, right? We, we were able to get a lot of rounds on the T side. Still didn't get close up to closing out the game. Let's go on to map two. Uh, you know, with a, a fresh mindset. Whereas D13, the closer this game gets, the more frustrating it's going to be for them and putting them in a bad mindset going into the next map. 15 to 10, or 15 to 5. And it's been four rounds straight now for Invictus. Mm -hmm. And at what point did D13 start to get frustrated? I know they're doing well in these pistol rounds, so it's not like they're being locked out, but another two buy rounds? You know, if it goes on 15 to 12, 15 to 13... Well, 15 to 12, yeah. I think they'll get very frustrated in that they can't close it out. Especially because all the rounds are so close. I don't think it's long before we start to see the CT side uh, turn around a little bit in, in terms of how they're even approaching the defense, start to mix up their strategies, go towards the, the B plan, the C plan. and Those are the ones you haven't practiced as much. Those are the ones that, yeah, sometimes they work out, but may, maybe not this time. And for Invictus... They're keeping themselves in it one round at a time, and, and that's another reason I think they've got to uh, they've got to be coming into this with an idea, especially winning so many clutches. That's the thing. A 1v3, a 1v4 for Destroyer earlier on. Those players are going to be amped up. They're going to be ready to go. And I think it's one of the one of the parts of being a professional player that you can't look at negatively. you got to look at the positives. There's the molly down, the smoke. They know 100% right it's there. That smoke couldn't have come from anywhere else. So one nade goes through. There's no more to work with, but it makes it very easy to tag him as he runs on out. So that's why I like the mind game play there, having a teammate smoke that off for you, because then they're never sure. Is there someone there? Isn't there someone there? You can always have that little bit of doubt in their minds. Oh, Annihilation. Gonna here with the op. There's a back of sight. Tamir's gonna get the first kill for them. He's just gonna respawn back onto him. However, the no scope's not really landing, unfortunately, but he tags Viva through the, the wall. A little bit of a box. Almost like she gets the kill onto him. He gets gooshed up just jumping across just randomly from a stray bullet. And they're gonna save this double op setup. Keep the M4 on Mr. Cap. We're going to see Invictus now get themselves up to 10 rounds. But this is uh, the interesting part, right? You said on T side for Invictus, five rounds is generally what they get on on this map. Does that mean we're going to see D13 close it out? Invictus break first. <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it here first from Jason. 100% using his... Uh... I don't even know what you call that. We have the transitive property. Not for this, but... I mean, stats don't lie, right? I suppose in a way it would be the transitive property, right? They got five rounds versus them, so they'll get five rounds versus these. Sort of thing, but... Oh. It's, I mean, like, it's still a long enough road for Invictus. D13 can feel... And this is the last round where they can feel comfortable. I know I said 16 to 12, or 15, 12, but because they saved over those weapons, this essentially plays out as that 12th. I take an eco, then it's 15, 13, or 15, 15, 12 then, but. Things are getting close. The double op setup's being pulled out on the CT side. The no scope attempt by Annihilation, a very brave one. Sprays from both players on the M4. They're trying to pull back any advantage they can. He has been tagged down, but he's closed in the distance. He hears the spam on the right side. Oh, but he gets caught by it straight through the smoke. Score's got another. And apparently that wasn't through the smoke, but I think we can all agree. <laughs> Wraith could yeah. not see him. 100% agree on that one. Mr. Cap, things has been molotov off in, down to 17 HP. Destroyer will take the B site, but the bomb is not going to be there. It's back in spawn. Lion's going to pick this up. And Jao Saga is just going to watch Annihilation. Please go for the knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's just jump spot. Guys, there's no one. Hey, there's no no. There's no one here. No, you're good. You're good. Go B. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I've been knifed. How's that happen? <laughs> well, they get B because of the kill that just came through at a story. Then they get A off of the knife. And was looking like a, a done deal here for D13. Puts them into an after plant situation. Three on three. Ooh. Tamir's gonna fall. Score's got the up. Raid's got the M4. 
gonna have to retake without the players and i i mean they're gonna lose rate like they're up five to three they oh. lose the round they lose all their guns <laughs> Is there a world now where we go into overtime, Mitch? I, I don't want to believe that's possible, how dominating D13 were. Let me go back to my point from earlier of at what point did D13 get tilted? That one. That point right right about there where you get knifed, where Score tries to save. He gets shot from an angle just as he looks away. Oh, it's just filthy. Absolute filth. The one sh one little tap by Shao Sage. Okay, it was a little bit of the spray, but get him with the first an absolutely glorious round for invictus and again it starts off in a pretty on pretty shaky ground three on five and they pulled it back yeah again kills coming through no refrags for d13 i can't wait for my messages on twitter later on you say invictus are bad at this map idiot caster but in all fairness they were pretty trash in that first half but now I mean, they D13... could have just stopped an idiot caster and been pretty oh, true. Thanks, man. Uh, but for D13, I mean, they've jumped in those trash bags themselves. They're looking to get taken out. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty grim situation, in all honesty. I don't think I've seen CT sides in general struggle so much. Now, that said, D13 are still very close to closing it out, and Invictus are not out of the woods by any means. They I don't still, know, man. But they've got to face off against two full buys before they actually, and a horse buy after in order to get themselves to that um to that overtime even when again we'll have to see them try to fix their ct side but we talked like the thing is overtime both teams are even right but if you're invictus and you could have closed it out that whole time even though you've each done exactly as well as the other you're gonna feel a lot worse going into that ot because you're no longer the underdog you're the one that should have closed it out i mean d13 yeah oh all right. Well, again, the Deagles, they won around from this before. And they do it yet again. Here, trying to go for the flank. Gets the information. There's going to be two more players coming towards B. They're actually being even flanked towards the B site. But Nihilish will be there. And what is happening? Invictus, they're looking so good to get themselves one step closer to the overtime. At least all in Destroyer now in the one on three. I mean, he shouldn't win this. This should be 16 11. There should be no world he's going to clutch us out. And there you go. Tamir will finish this off 16 to 11, but still. I will say this, Mitch, that was such a disappointing performance out of D13 in that second half. To go 10-5, to have Annihilation.